Hi there, welcome to step one of the walk cycle tutorial. So the first thing that we need to do in this step is get hold of the rig that we're using. So the rig that I've just shown you in the example is this happy guy and he is called Ultimate Walker and I will show you where he lives on the internet. So if we go to this website here, so this is cgmeetup.net uh, and I'll put the exact link in the video description. Uh, but you can see on this page, which uh, was written by a Jason, so I'm going to assume that Jason is the, the guy that created these rigs, and they're ace. You can see he's got loads of different character rigs here that are really good for learning animation. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find Ultimate Walker, and it tells you what his features are, and the all-important thing is this download button here. So make sure you download it, which I have already done. So if you have a look here, I have downloaded Walker. So we'll just open that up. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you get him open with no animation on him or anything. So here he is, handsome chap. So he's quite a simplified rig. He hasn't got arms or a head. He doesn't need them because he's just, we're just learning the kind of mechanics of getting the legs animated in this video. So that's, that's kind of all we need. Okay, so in addition to the rig that we've got, we also need some reference stuff. So if we go back out to the internet, hi internet. And I'm going to be looking for some video reference, first of all. And I'm going to be using 3D.SK, who have kindly agreed to sponsor this tutorial. So thank you very much for that. And it's just as well, really, because I'm using their, their video reference. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is find um, a walk cycle, uh, a video walk cycle that I like the look of. So to do that, I'm going to go in here. Now, the first thing I'm going to change is a uh, close type, because you see there's a nude thing here. And if I was to leave that um, as anything, there would be so, so much nudity. So we'll just go for casual clothes, I think, in this instance. We're going to have a look in the video section, and I want um, walking video. And I'm also going to change the search for to videos here. And then when I click on search, here we go. And I actually want to use this first one, so she's just going to walk across, I think. And there's also one where she walks forward as well. So we'll just go for this first one here. Make sure it opens up all right. And this is what I want it to be. Yeah, so that's just kind of showing how she walks like that. So I'd highly recommend doing that because what I've done uh, is I've broken this down a little bit. So if we have a look here, I've actually taken the video and I've broken it down into the poses. Uh, and you can see I've also assigned some frame numbers to them which I'll talk about how I did that shortly. But you can see we've got each of the poses. So this one here is the first contact pose. Uh, on the, the good thing about kind of getting video reference when you break it down is you can see all the different things that change. So I think if it's the first time you've done a walk cycle, you'd maybe fall into the trap of thinking it's just the legs that you need to move, which is not the case. You actually need to be moving um, more than that. And you see in this example here, if we look at where the hip is over here, um, in fact, let's just, um, yeah, you can see it's more this, this bit here and this bit, you can see that this is kind of facing forward, whereas over here, that bit of the hip has gone. So, uh, the actual hips are rotating as well, which is something that you really need to look at. As well as that, you can kind of get a, a feel for what the shape of the kind of legs is in uh, each frame so you can see that one like that is not quite uh, the, the feet are up in the air so that's worth looking at and on this one here we can kind of get up from the hips and we can see there's a bend uh, but the toes are lifting so we're going to get that kind of that shape there where there's still something in contact with the floor so breaking these down and having a look kind of what's happening on on each frame is a really good way to do things uh, and I would highly recommend going to somewhere like 3D.SK for their reference video or filming yourself doing the movements that you're looking at because your animation will be a lot stronger because you've taken the time to do that. This is what it looks like from the side. If we have a look at the front as well, we can also see some important stuff. So we saw that the hips are kind of rotating backwards and forwards, but they also rotate up and down. So if we look here, so she's got her right leg down. Uh, and this leg is contacting, but you can see the hips are kind of going down in that direction. And then when she swapped legs, so once this one here is the one that's forward, 
you can see that the hips, the rotation of them has changed. So when we're animating this, we also need to be aware of this and put some rotation into the hips. And here, although it's not perfectly straight, it kind of should be. So you can see that um, the rotation of the hips is happening all the way through. And that's something that we need to get into the animation as well. That is what this video reference can be really critical for, for really getting that understanding of what's happening. So in addition to that, um, you can see here, I've got these frame numbers. And um, these are very specific frame numbers. We're gonna be animating this on 12s, which is animation speak for the kind of speed that we're gonna be doing. So that's two steps per second. So we're gonna have left foot forward, right foot forward, and that's gonna happen in one second. And where I got these frame timings from is from a book, would you believe? So I want to show you this book because it's ace. This one here, there you go, can you see it? There it is. This is called the Animator's Survival Kit. And if there was a Bible for animation, it would be this. It is so good. Um, and I will try and show you. What I'll do is I think I'll overlay some video over this section so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, but you've got the, uh, the different poses here have been laid out. But more importantly, on the other page, um, the frame timings are there. So you can see that the first contact has been put on frame one and the last contact is put on frame 13. And that's for one step. So we know that we are going to double that so that we can um, have two steps. It shows you where the passing pose should be and where the up and down poses should be. And this book is phenomenal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this book because if you want to be an animator, you should own this book. It should be with you at all times. Uh, to give you an idea of kind of the depth that it goes into, there's about 100 pages covering walk cycles. It then moves on to runs and stuff like that. So it's ridiculously good for the fundamentals. So I'll put a link below to somewhere that you can buy the book, probably Amazon. And if I can figure it out, it, uh, it might be a, a referral link. So I might get a kickback if I can work out how to set that up. But I should probably state that now just in case I do get that set up. Yeah, check this book out. This is where I'm getting the timings from for this walk cycle. So I'm using um, a lot of a lot of reference material to get this, this working. So I've got video reference. I'm also looking at the animation guide in this book. I'm getting frame timings uh, and it's all gonna come together in the next step when we start putting the contact poses in. With that said, the next thing that we need to look at, let's go back into Maya. We just want to get Maya set up for creating this animation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of change my workspace. So up in the top corner, we're set to Maya Classic, which is great for most things, but I want a little bit more on screen. And I'm just gonna kind of change the layout. So I'm gonna drop this down and go to animation, which is the one at the bottom. And you'll see this changes a few things. Now we've got, um, this is a, a graph editor down the bottom, which is really good. And we'll use the graph editor later on. Uh, and we've also got this here, but I don't want this. So I'm gonna tap space bar and it should put me into the four view, which it does. That's exactly what I want. And then I'm gonna pull this down because I only want two views. So I've got my perspective view over here and this is the top view, which is not actually what I want. So I'm just gonna change this panel to orthographic side. And this is the view I want. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit on this because I'll do most of the animation in the orthographic views. So this is what I want to see here is just kind of for preview purposes. But this this one here is the important view. OK, so we've got that set up. The next thing that I want to do is go into the, the settings. So let's click on this little chap down here. I love this guy. He looks like he's being attacked by a cog. Like, oh, he's chasing me now. Uh, so here he is. Uh, right. So I'm just going to change that to start at one. Like that. And um, we also want to make sure that the playback speed is on real time 24 frames per second like that. So that's what I'm going for. So we'll leave that one there. I also want to change something else. I'm going to go to the animation settings here and we're looking at the default in and out tangent. And what tangents are, are the shape of your animation curves. And we'll cover this a little bit later. So at the moment they're set to auto. I don't like leaving it auto because then I feel like I'm not in control. So I'm going to change this to being spline which I'm quite comfortable with. I may well change them away from being spline when I'm making the tweaks later, but I'm gonna have them at spline now because I'm comfortable with it. So we'll click on save. Okay, so that's basically Maya setup.
for this animation. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do. So I'm starting at frame one, but I need to end at frame 25. So I'm just going to tap 25 in this box and press enter. Yay! So we're going from one to 25, which will allow me to put in the timings um, that I just kind of showed you. Okay, so before we can actually get any animation done, we're going to turn on one last thing. This is called uh, Auto Key, and it's amazing. So it lives here, uh, this little icon just here. There you go, Auto Keyframe Toggle. We click on that, you see it stays on. And what this does, on frame one in the next step, we're going to set keys on everything. So all the controllers. Um, and then whenever we move on to another frame and change anything, what will happen is it will automatically drop a keyframe on there for us which is a ridiculously good time saver. It can also keep your, your graphs a little bit neater as well. So we need to have that on. Right, we're now ready to move on to the next step and start doing some animation. So the next step, we're gonna set up the first contact pose, which will be on frame one. Um, so make sure that you've got all your settings like I've got, um, check out the animated survival kit and also have a look at 3D.sk for some reference stuff. And I will see you in the next step where we'll get the first pose put together.